Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking into how we can send push notifications using Spring Boot application. Now to do this we'll be using WebSockets and then we will use the Storm protocol to send messages to the various clients. So first we will look at how we can send notifications to all the clients and then we will look into how we can send notification to specific clients. So with this let's get started. Okay let's start by going to start.spring.io and here what we are going to do is we are going to add the dependency for WebSockets. So we are going to add WebSocket dependency here and then we are going to give it an group ID and an application name. So this is the only dependency that you need for now. So you can already generate this particular project. Now I already have created this particular project and I have filled in with some code. So let's look at the first configuration that we will have to do. So if you see here, I have this particular configuration here that is for the broker configuration and the stomp endpoint configuration. Now here what I'm specifying here is I'm registering a slash WS endpoint on which I will be doing the socket communication. So basically the web socket communication, right? And then after that, I'm also specifying that now in case if the web socket connection does not work because some of the browsers don't support web sockets, then in that case, it can fall back to the SockJS implementation. So this I'm providing it to the same WS endpoint. This is the Stomp endpoint through which actually the client will connect to the application itself. So now the next thing that we will look into is setting up the broker itself. So we are setting up an internal broker, which will actually hold the messages and replay it to the various clients. So for this, what we are doing is we are setting up two destinations. We are setting up the all destination and we are setting the specific destination. Now the intention of the all destination here is actually to broadcast to all the clients that have been connected to this particular application, while the specific one is going to be used to send notification only to specific users. So these are the two destinations that we have set in here. Now the third part that is here, that is this application destination prefixes. So here what I'm setting it as slash app. Now what is this particular destination prefix? So this is basically like any message that has been sent to this particular prefix is going to be ended up to a particular controller. Now where is this particular controller? So we have this particular message controller, which defines here that first of all, any message that comes in with slash application, we are going to handle it. Internally, what does this mean is that any client that sends a message to slash app slash application would be handled here. So this is implicitly inferred from the part that we have defined in the broker settings here. So it is slash app. And then after that, you have slash application. So now what this thing does is a client that sends a message on this particular or a notification on this particular destination, it would then route it back to all slash messages. That means all the clients that have subscribed to this particular destination will start receiving this particular notification. Now regarding the private endpoint, we will look at it a little bit later. So now let's look at a client application. Now this client application is pretty simple. So what have I done here is I am creating a particular WebSocket communication here and then I'm creating a Storm client which will run over the particular WebSocket. Here what I do, I connect and then I subscribe to all the notifications that come on this slash all slash messages. And then nothing, I'm just showing this particular message. So what this show method does is it actually just puts this particular message text into a P tag and then afterwards appends it into this response. So if you check here, we have this particular messages section in which it will put in the particular text. Pretty simple UI. What this UI has is it just has a button called as send message and it has a text field which has some particular text. Now the idea here is whenever I click on the send message button, it actually triggers sending of the message to slash app slash application. So basically I'm trying to send messages to all the connected clients. So this would then be handled by the controller here, which will then send the messages to all the connected clients, which would then be read by all the subscribers here. Now with this, let's actually start this particular application. Okay, so now application has started. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new tab here and I'm going to go to localhost 8080. Now I have opened two tabs here. In both the tabs, I'm going to actually 
open localhost 8080 now these are the two clients that have been connected to my application right so here what i have i have the send button through which i'll be sending a notification to all my connected clients so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put in some text like notification to all when i press the send button this notification gets sent to all the connected clients so as you can see here this client which was also connected which is subscribing to all slash messages is also getting this particular message right now this is how you can actually broadcast messages or notifications to all your connected clients now there is a situation wherein you want to actually send messages to a private user right for this what we need to do is first of all we need to have the user logged in because only when the user is logged in that's the time you know that you can actually send it to the right destination as such right so for this what we are going to do is let's go to the pom file and we are going to first of all add spring security here. now why are we adding spring security here is so that we want a particular logged in user as such so what i do next is i go to the security config so in the security config i first of all configure the security such that it actually allows all connections to go to the slash ws which is our socket endpoint itself right so i don't want any authentication to be done on the socket endpoint but any other request it needs to be authenticated and i'm then setting a out of the box available login form and then i'm also setting a logout handler url now what i'm doing is i'm also setting an inbuilt user called as test and test with a role user here now this is just security config that i'm trying to create here i don't want to register a new user completely and then afterwards show you the entire process but rather have a user already which i know is present here this is the security related config right now the next thing is that we need to actually handle the message such that it has to be sent only to the user that i'm trying to send it to. for this reason what we have here is in the message controller i have this special path called as private now in this path how this incoming message will come is any client that sends a notification on slash app slash private will be handled by this particular function here now the message that comes in has two parameters it has basically the message itself and it has the two part here the two is basically the message that i want to send to this is nothing but it's a custom class that i've created here it has just a text and a two field this is the part wherein i have handled the controller let's look at the client code now in the client code what i'm doing here is so here we have a private storm client which is again going to set up a communication over the web socket and then what it does is it then subscribe to this particular topic called as user slash specific now you must be wondering that why is it user slash specific and where have we specified this user slash specific now to answer this particular question whenever a user logs in and he subscribes to something called as user slash specific spring automatically because the request has been sent from an authenticated client so spring automatically knows that this particular client has to be communicated with the path user slash specific hyphen the session id where does the session id come from the session id is basically the current user's login session id since this request is right now being sent from an authenticated client this subscribe method is actually going to subscribe to slash user slash specific hyphen the session id let's go back now to the message controller now in the message controller here if you see when i'm sending this particular message which is coming from an external client i'm sending it to slash specific I'm actually not specifying any session ID here or I'm not even specifying slash user. This is what this particular template handles. Since you're using convert and send to user, it takes this particular user, it figures out what the session is and it then appends it here internally with it knowing that it has to send it to a user path, right? So it sends it to slash user slash specific hyphen the session ID. And this is how a notification that you get from here is sent to a specific client i have this thing already running so let's actually look at it now here i'm not logged in in any of the windows so first of all let's try sending a private message right so a private notification and i'm going to specify that i want to send it to the test user when i say send nothing actually happens here. why because none of our clients are actually logged in using the test user so now what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to trigger login here and I'm going to use the test user here. I sign in here and now let's test actually sending the notification to all the clients. So when I say 
notification to all so the logged in user also gets it and this client also gets it right but now let's actually try sending it a private message now when i send this private message you see here only the private notification is received by the logged in user here why because this message was been sent to app slash private which was then routed to user slash specific hyphen user session in this way this particular client was able to actually read this private notification so this private notification only goes to this logged in user now if i try to log out and now try to send this private notification nothing happens because this session has been logged out let's log in here again and try sending the private notification and the private notification is sent the public notification which is open to all is still open here so with this we saw how we can send push notifications using a spring boot application to all clients or to specific clients now we used here an embedded broker using which we established websocket communication and then used the storm protocol on top of it now i keep on exploring more such kind of things so if you like this particular video give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to see more such kind of videos till then take care and see you in my next one